Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with Developer University. For more of my training videos for beginners, please visit me at devview.com. In this lesson, I want to build a super simple C Sharp application. I want you to follow along. Uh, it's a hello world application, meaning that we're merely going to print out the words hello world to a console window. And the point of this exercise is just to show you the basic workflow. So I'm not going to attempt to even explain why we're doing what we're doing. The focus will be on what I'm going to do next and how I'm doing it. In other words, I want you to focus on the basic workflow. That'll be the same for all the applications we'll build in this course and pretty much every application you'll ever build using C Sharp. Things like how to create a new project. Where do you type in your C Sharp code? How do you test your application to make sure that it's running correctly and what do you do whenever you have an error in your code? Uh, how do you save your project? Things of that nature. Uh, so for now, just try to follow along. Don't worry if something doesn't make a lot of sense at this point. That's really what the rest of this course is for. In the next few lessons after this one, we're going to dissect this tiny little application that we built. Uh, and I'm going to explain at that point why we did what we did. And then what does the code mean and why it's doing what it's doing. Uh, and just a quick reminder, like I said in the previous video, the introduction of this course, I'm going to assume that you have some version and some edition of Visual Studio already installed. Even if your Visual Studio looks a little bit different than mine does on camera here, uh, don't be overly concerned about that. The basics are the same no matter what, I promise. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. And to begin, we're going to create a new project. There are a number of different ways to do this, but I'm going to keep it simple and go to File, New, project and selecting that menu option will open up the new project dialog now chances are the number of items that you see here in this center part will be dramatically different than the items that I see based on which version and edition of Visual Studio that you have installed however you should be able to select templates and then select C sharp and one of the options should be a console application all right, so I want you to select that, and then we're going to rename this project to Hello World. Now notice, I used a little naming convention where I use a capital H in Hello and a capital W in World, and I don't use a space in between the two words. Now that's just a naming convention that I came up with to help me identify projects a little bit easier, something I recommend that you follow. We shouldn't have to make any other changes in this dialog. I'm going to go ahead and click the OK button. And Visual Studio will go off and now create the starting point of a console window application for us. All right, and so now you should see in this main area, in this text area, uh, a file open called program.cs. And there's some code here that uh, is already generated for us, boilerplate code. We're going to ignore most of that, except we're going to find this innermost set of curly braces. Now, one of the first things you're going to need to do when you're learning how to develop software is tell the difference between a, a parentheses, curly braces, square brackets, angle brackets, and I don't know that I left out any, okay? But here we want the curly braces, look like little mustaches turned on their side. These are important. And I want to go inside of those, uh, of those two, that opening and closing curly brace, and make some room for ourselves. This is where we're going to type our code. So it's approximately line 13 and 14, at least in my uh, copy of Visual Studio. And then I'm going to type in the following. I type in console, and you may notice now this little window pops up below what I'm typing. You can safely ignore that for now. Eventually this becomes our best friend, but for now it might kind of be distracting and get in the way. Just try to ignore it and type in everything by hand to the best of your ability. Console, and then I want to use the period on the keyboard. I'm going to call it the dot. So console dot, and then capital W, right capital L line. Next I'm going to use an opening and closing parenthesis. So that's not a curly brace. These are just the uh, like the, the, the characters you would use for a smiley face in an emoticon. Okay. And then inside of there, I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to kind of navigate around here. I'm going to go inside of the opening and closing parenthesis and I'm going to use two double quotes. So it should look like that. All right. 
Make sure you don't use single quotation marks like that. That's not what we want. We want double quotation marks like that. Okay? And inside of there, we're going to type in the words hello and world. All right? So make sure that you have an open parenthesis, a double quote, the words hello world, then another double quote, then another parenthesis, a closing parenthesis, and then at the very end of this line, I'm going to use a semicolon, and it looks like that. All right, so it's not a colon, and it's not a comma. All right, it, it looks like that. All right, and then I'm going to use the enter key on my keyboard to go to the next line. I'm going to type in console dot capital read capital L in line opening and closing parenthesis. Now you may have noticed that as you op as you type in the opening parenthesis, that Visual Studio will automatically type in a closing word for you. Don't let that throw. You can continue just to type through that, but make sure that you have exactly what I've typed into my code window here for these two lines of code. Uh, make sure that the capitalization is correct. Make sure that you're using a period, not a comma, for uh, for the uh, for the little. Uh, mark that comes after the word console. Make sure you're using parentheses and not some other type of bracket or brace. And then make sure that both lines of code end with a semicolon. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is save my project. So I'm going to go, and there are a number of different ways to do this in Visual Studio. Again, I'm going to keep it simple and go to File, Save All. All right. And then uh, the next thing I want to do is now see my application actually running. And so to do that, I can either find this little green arrow, this little green triangle that has the word start next to it, or if I don't see that, by default in my little toolbar here at the top, I can go to debug and select start debugging. Either way should work. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you'll notice that some windows pop up and Visual Studio changes its appearance a little bit. Now off to the side of my screen, the console window popped up and we see the words hello world with a blinking cursor below it. I'm just going to hit the enter key on my keyboard and then the console window disappears and I'm back into Visual Studio, it kind of resets itself and uh, we're successful, right? However, maybe your experience wasn't successful. Maybe you saw an error message. So what I want to do is take a moment and look at some common errors that people that are new to C-sharp might run into and how to, to remedy them. And this is a good opportunity to learn some of the syntax rules of C-sharp as we make mistakes. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video, make a mistake, and then we'll talk about it, pause it, and, and so on. All right, so when you attempted to start the application, you may have seen a little dialog pop up from Visual Studio that says there were build errors. Would you like to continue and run the last successful build? Always select no for that, okay? And what you'll see next is a list of errors. Now, uh, in some cases, the error messages will be obvious to you and they'll make a lot of sense. Sometimes they won't, like the, the verbiage might be something we're just not familiar with yet. Invalid token in class, struct, or interface, what does that mean, okay? So typically what you can just do is double click on these and it'll put your mouse cursor on the line where the problem is. Notice that Visual Studio also gives you another visual way to tell that there's a problem with your code. It gives you this little red squiggly line. Sometimes you'll see a blue squiggly line. They're a little bit different, but uh, essentially this is an area of the code that probably deserves your attention, something you need to fix. Now in this particular case, the problem is that we didn't type our code in between the innermost opening and closing curly braces. And so this is an issue with regards to defining a code block in C Sharp or a block of code. So different C Sharp commands belong in different kinds of code blocks. And I'm going to spend a lot of time in this course talking about the different types of code blocks uh, and what belongs in each type of code block. But to remedy this issue, what you need to do, use your, your mouse and just kind of drag and highlight these two lines. Or you can use the shift key on your keyboard and the arrow keys to kind of highlight that area, hit control X, then move up in between the opening and closing curly brace and 
paste control V that code in there and then it should run correctly at that point. All right. So that teaches us the first thing about C sharp. It matters where we type our code. All right. Or when you try to run the application, you may have seen the same build error dialog, uh, except you see the message semicolon expected. Hopefully this is an obvious remedy for you. If you double click on that error in the error list, it should take you to the end of the line of code where you forgot to add a semicolon. And so that's the second thing about C Sharp that we're going to learn is that um, uh, just like a properly formed English sentence has to end with a period or a question mark or an exclamation mark, a properly formed instruction in C Sharp has to end with a semicolon. All right. Or maybe the error that you saw was something like a syntax error something expected, the name hello doesn't exist in the current context, the name world doesn't exist in the current context. If you were to double click these, you'll get to the vicinity of the problem and you'll also see uh, that there's red squiggly lines beneath the words hello and world in between of our parentheses. Now remember we needed to use double quotation marks around that string of characters hello world. Uh, and so alphanumeric characters that we want to literally write to screen or present in some way, uh, we need to surround them with characters that indicate that we want to use this literal string, the string of literal characters. Okay, so to do that we use double quotes. Or perhaps you see the error, something like, the name console does not exist in the current context, and you're like, doesn't exist in the current context. You look at the word and you say, well, it looks spelled correctly. Remember uh, that I told you you had to type exactly what I was typing. And so C sharp is case sensitive, meaning that a lowercase c and an uppercase c mean that you're typing two completely different things into C sharp. Okay. And that, that does, uh, that is tricky because many of us are not used to that degree of precision whenever we're communicating. But when communicating with a computer, you have to be precise. So in this case, all we needed to do was change the capitalization of the word console and we're back in business. Or perhaps you see something like console does not contain a definition for either write line or read line. And again, you're looking at it and you're thinking it's spelled correctly. Well, what could the problem be? Here again, uh, capitalization is important. Lowercase r read line is different than uppercase r read line. And lowercase l read line is different than uh, lowercase, uppercase L read line, okay? And so again, things have to be spelled, spelled correctly and have the correct capitalization in order to be processed correctly by the C Sharp compiler. We'll talk about compilation in the next lesson. Now fortunately, if you're not good at spelling and you're not good at typing and capitalization and you're just not as precise in, in the way that you would type a letter uh, or an email message or even a text message, fortunately Visual Studio can help you out. There are tools that will help you not only write your code more quickly but also more accurately and chances are if you use, utilize those tools, uh, the chances that you will miss some of these really simple syntax things like capitalization will almost be completely eliminated. We'll talk about some of those tools in an upcoming lesson. All right, but uh, assuming that you got all of this to work correctly, you're, you're really well on your way to building applications. You've already crossed over one of the big first steps. And as you undoubtedly learned in this lesson, writing C-sharp code is an exercise in being precise in precision. And again, fortunately, the Visual Studio IDE will help you out a lot when it comes to that. It will give you clues and maybe some of the phrases and the words that they use to explain the issue might not be familiar to you yet. With experience it will be. Uh, but generally you'll, it'll point you into the right direction and with the red squiggly lines in the message you can typically figure out what the issue is. Now throughout this course if you run into a wall and you simply can't figure out what the problem is do this, compare character by character. Take your time until you 
until you kind of develop a vision for for the problems where your eye will jump to the problem in code. Compare what you wrote versus what I wrote. I'll supply the source code to you. And so open it up in a second copy of Visual Studio and then just look line uh, character by character. What did I do different than what Bob did? All right, and that will usually help you figure things out if you can't do it on your own. All right, so in the following lessons, we're gonna focus on two things. First of all, we're gonna talk about why we did what we did and what was going on behind the scenes that turned our code into a working application, albeit a small application. What happens whenever we create a new project? What happens whenever we, we choose to save our project? What happens whenever we choose to start or run our application? And then secondly, we're going to talk about the syntax of the C-sharp code that we wrote, and we'll learn more syntax rules and more keywords as we go along. So if precision is so very important in C-sharp, then you're going to need to have some explanation as to what all those little words and symbols actually mean and some rules to guide you as you're writing your own code. Uh, it's, it's really easy once you get a few of the basics under your belt. Uh, being completely honest, uh, Many, many people learn how to code, how to write code, and C-sharp is a fairly easy language to learn. You can do this. Just you got to put in a little bit of time, a little bit of effort to figure it out. All right? So uh, we'll begin that process in the very next lesson. We'll see you there. Thanks.